Welcome to the Rustic Garden. Today the Rustic Garden has challenged Callie Kim to a tomato grow off. We're going to grow a single beefsteak tomato from seed, plant it outside as a seed, grow it through the season. On August 1st we're going to see who has the largest tomato. And we're also going to look at you know how many tomatoes are on the plant, the overall health of the plant, but the real challenge is to see who can grow the biggest beefsteak tomato. Now this is going to be a series, so I want to show you all how you can start seeds outside in the Northeast. Um, you've seen plenty of videos, all these have been started indoors, you don't have to do that. You can start them outdoors of course by seed, but I want to show you how I set up the soil for that process and then the whole process from seeding all the way to harvesting. And if you have a good eye, you can see some damage on the plants right here. These are, whoops. This is damage on here from the sun. When you grow plants indoors, they are not acclimated to the sun. They're not used to the sun. So they grow nice and cushily indoors, if that's a word, under the grow lights, not used to the weather, uh, the wind, the rain, the sun. And if you put them outside right away, they're going to burn. By starting seeds outdoors, of course, you don't have to do that. But today is April 18th. And I'm putting them out about four weeks early. I got frost the other day. I'm going to get frost tonight. And hopefully I have a window to get these out in a second, which I think I will between the rain. But I'm putting them out early. So I'm going to show you a trick that I use to get your seeds out early if you're doing your warm weather crops like tomatoes and peppers. But I wanted to show you the fertilizer that I'm going to be using. One of the biggest problems we have is that we overlove our plants with too much fertilizer. What you're going to notice I'm not going to put in here, there's going to be no Epsom salts, there's going to be no um, mineral dust, granite dust, um, green sand, no kelp meal, anything like that. You can use that if you want, but it's not really needed, especially when you're going out into earth beds. But what I am going to use, and I'm going to make a batch here that's going to feed that single beefsteak tomato the entire season. So we're going to go with one cup of bone meal. I think that's like a 6-8 NP and K, but it has calcium. So I definitely want calcium in my mix because tomatoes can get blossom end rot. And that happens if you don't have enough calcium or you have uneven watering or a combination of both. But this will supply plenty of calcium to my tomato. And again, it's a uh, nitrogen number of six, um, phosphorus of eight, and potassium of zero. This is just eco scraps. You can use any organic fertilizer. Most of them are the same. It's going to be a cup. This is a 555 fertilizer, which is what I generally recommend. You know, if it's a 333 or a 647, don't worry about it. But one cup of any organic fertilizer. And then I'm going to use one cup of premium worm casting, which I consider my secret weapon. And that's what I like to call nature's end product. It has humic acid, good fungi, good microbes, everything nature intended to be in your garden. And why am I adding this in there? I'll talk a little bit about it when I get outside. But the bone meal, the all-purpose organic fertilizer, it's a slow release fertilizer. That's what I want. Slow, even feeding over the whole season for this beefsteak tomato to eventually beat Kim and, you know, probably produce a three or four pound tomato. It's a slow release, so it's in a form that the tomato root system can't pull in right now. The nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium can't pull in that. Um, yeah, the root system can't pull in the nitrogen, the phosphorus, and the potassium because it's not in a water-soluble form. Microbiology, soil biology, uh, fungi need to break down the organic fertilizer, turn it into a form of NP and K the root system can absorb. And that's what the worm castings will help with. It's going to supply humic acid. It's going to supply its own immediately available form of N, P, and K. Just lots of good stuff. But it's also going to supply the fungi to start multiplying and growing and breaking down your organic fertilizers. And why is that important? Because if your organic fertilizer is just sitting there, not being broken down, the N, P, and K can't get to your plant. So this combination is what I believe will make this single tomato plant the best on the East Coast and the West Coast. 
<laughs> that being said, I, I don't know who's going to win, but we're going to have some fun with it. So I'm going to put one cup of this down about 18 inches into the planting hole. I'm going to put another cup on top, and then I'm going to save another cup for a side dressing. And this is all the fertilizer I'm going to need. I'm going to do one more trick. This is an aspirin, and I'll be doing a video on this probably next week. The salicylic acid in here mimics a hormone that's naturally found in tomato plants. And you can look this up. Uh, look up um, aspirin in tomato, do an internet search, and you'll find actually all this great research that shows that this aspirin will trigger a response in some, the tomato, making it think that it's being attacked, and it's going to beef up its defenses. No pun intended. Now, the reason you want to do that, I'm looking for something to crush this with. See if I can use this wet spoon here. The reason you want to do that, in the East Coast, unlike the West Coast, um, we get early blight and we get leaf spot. So I'd like to have my tomato plants ready to go to defend off these diseases. And the aspirin really does work. You'll notice the leaves actually get a little more uh, thicker and kind of leathery looking. We'll also be doing a um, probably a monthly sprinkling, a water can worth of aspirin on the plants to keep that response going. But again, this is going to probably be a six-part series. It's going to show you how to start tomatoes from seed outside. And today's video is really going to be about prepping the soil area and then using a cloche. And I'm going to say this a couple of times because the cloche is the way to bring the 80 degree sunny California weather to your seedlings over here, or to, actually to your seeds here on the northeast. All right, so we've got three cups of fertilizer. This will be plenty over the whole spring, summer, and early fall. Hopefully this tomato will keep growing. A cup about 18 inches down, a cup on top, and a cup for side dressing. Now, as we progress through um, the series, I'm also going to probably use the chemical fertilizers. I know a lot of you frown on them. They are not poisonous, but I'm going to use it in a strategic way because the goal is to have a super healthy plant, super healthy soil, and also to win the contest, right? All right, let me think real quick. Oh, one more thing. So here's the tomato seeds. So these are red beef steaks. We're both growing the same variety of beef steak. We're going to take three seeds because you don't want to be waiting for one seed to sprout. So we're going to take three seeds, put them in the ground. Whatever is the strongest after maybe about two weeks after germination, we're going to keep and we're going to remove the other two. So remember, put down more than one seed if you're planting by seed outdoors. You don't want to be waiting around for something to sprout that's just not going to germinate. All right, let's take this outside and get to planting. Okay, let's get to planting. I'm going to go down about a foot deep to 18 inches deep. Same thing, foot across, 18 inches across. This soil's been prepared well over the years. I'm also putting it in a place where the morning sunlight will come in through here, and then the late morning and afternoon sun will come in here. So it's going to get plenty of sun. Not difficult to set this up well to beat Cali Kim and any other contestants. You can see as we get further into the hole here, I have a lot of clay soil. That's what I want to loosen up with the peat moss. So I'm going to put in about two shovelfuls of peat moss. This will also hold water. Loosen it up nicely for the root system. And that's generally the setup. Now the good thing about clay soil, it's got a lot of micronutrients in there. So into the bottom, one cup of the mix. Mix that in well. That will all start breaking down nicely with the worm castings, with the organic fertilizer, the worm castings, bringing the good fungi and microbes. That will break down. The organic fertilizer 
which will set up the N, P, and K to be absorbed by the root system. All right, so that's set up. Pull the dirt back in. It's a great planting base. Let's pull it all in. Across the top, we're going to put in another, here's the tomatoes, tomato seeds. Another cup, we're going to save the final cup for a side dressing later in the season. Tomatoes grow deep roots from the bottom and also grow surface roots. This is to hit the top surface here for those surface roots. Mix it in well. Get in, use your hands. Again, we have a lot of clay. Break it all up. And this is gonna be the planting area. Now, we had frost yesterday. We're gonna have frost tomorrow. So I'm getting these out really about four weeks early. But you can do that with seeds if you use this trick. That's a cloche. This is how you can capture California warmth in the Northeast. So we're going to pick three tomato seeds that look the healthiest. Bigger tomato seeds don't grow bigger plants. Just make a little triangle. Press them down About a half an inch deep. You're going deeper than you would in starting trays because you're out in the ground. Cover it up. The ground is already wet, but if it was you know, more dry, you'd water it in. Put the cloche right over it. This is how you capture California warmth in the Northeast. This is gonna stay on here until the seeds germinate and break the surface. They'll be perfectly fine in there. They're below the ground. Don't need to worry about the humidity or the heat or anything that happens in here. The ground will actually regulate the colder nights and it will regulate the warmer days when the sun is coming in here. But this is the setup for my beefsteak tomato. Fun challenge to see who can grow the biggest beefsteak tomato come August 1st. I encourage all you Northeastern gardeners, your Northern gardeners, your Canadian gardeners to join me and show the West Coast what we can do with real temperatures, not just sunny 80 degree days. You can follow us on Facebook under Gardening Coast to Coast and also follow us on Instagram. I'll put all the links down in the description. But I hope a lot of you follow along and let's see how we can get our the West Coast to see who can grow the biggest beefsteak tomatoes. It should be a lot of fun. Thanks for watching.